Hiveness. I'm back here to explain the uh, detail details of Hiveness. I'm back here to explain the concept of this apoptosis completely in examination point of view how to handle the questions how to go uh, right answer with most of the questions and everything okay so coming to this process okay we have already learned the basics and everything related to this i'll be focusing more on the flow chart so it occurs by two ways one is one is the intrinsic pathway and the second one is the extrinsic pathway so intrinsic pathway means simply it should be inside the cell okay so intrinsic pathway is basically in your mitochondria intrinsic pathway starts inside the mitochondria because it is inside the cell whereas your extrinsic pathway is going to start this is a normal cell in the cell receptors cell membrane receptors you can call it as death receptor sometimes it is called as death receptor pathway that is outside the cell inside the cell mitochondria intrinsic pathway outside the cell that is death receptor pathway extrinsic okay so what happens inside the cell okay inside the cell like during the process of this apoptosis inside the cell there will be lysis of mitochondria or you can simply call it as uh, increasing in the permeability rather than lysis word it's better to add increasing in the permeability of mitochondria so whenever there is increasing in the permeability of mitochondria as we know that there is something called as cytochrome c which is present in the mitochondria is now released into the cytoplasm so cytochrome c which is present in the mitochondria is now released in the cytoplasm so this cytochrome c which is present in the mitochondria releasing into the cytoplasm is going to react with few genes that is apf1 okay so this is going to react with the cytochrome c that is now the cytochrome c is called as cytoplasmic cytochrome c okay is going to react with this and it's going to activate it's going to activate capsis 9 it's going to activate the capsis 9 so and uh, this 9 is the one which is going to take the restore process but it's going to activate the c okay so uh, the protein that is the protein that is present in mitochondria which is cytochrome c is now going to leak out and it is going to come into the cytoplasm this released protein cytoplasm c now is going to bind with apaf apaf factor that is nothing but apoptosis activating factor okay so totally this combination is called as Epop, apoptosome okay this combination is called as apoptosome which is going to activate this capsis 9 so apart from this this is one mode of activating capsis 9 by uh, cytochrome c so apart from this there is other mode of occurrence of uh, the activation of capsis 9 that is there is something called as because uh, i have seen questions on this area so that's that's the reason why i'm stressing a lot so there is something called as smac which is also called as diablo diblo okay so this is other other uh, uh, protein okay other mitochondrial protein that is going to leach out 
so apart from cytochrome c the second modality is even this protein will leach out and it leach out and it inhibits anti apoptotic ipa okay this factor which is going to come into the cytoplasm and it's going to stop or it's going to inhibit iap this iap is nothing but this iap is nothing but physiological inhibitor of apoptosis so it's going to stop it's going to stop the inhibitor of apoptosis by which it's going to activate the capsinase 9 okay so this is what the intrinsic pathway is okay this is what the intrinsic pathway is okay i'm repeating again so intrinsic means inside the mitochondria so during this process the mitochondria permeability increases one factor which is going to come out from mitochondria is cytochrome c cytochrome c is going to bond with apaf1 that is apoptosis activating factor 1 to form apoptosome this apoptosome is going to initiate capsaicin 9 so the second modality is there is other protein called as smac or daplo which is going to leak out from mitochondria and this leak out is going to activate or inhibit the inhibiting factor by which activating the capsaicin 9 so capsaicin 9 is the end product of extrinsic pathway of apoptosis the next comes is the sorry uh, uh, we are talking about the intrinsic pathway that is inside the inside the cell that is mitochondria so next one is the extrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway has already said it is outside and it is basically associated with the death receptor which is present on the cell membrane that is death receptor pathway okay so death receptor pathway so what what happens with the death receptor pathway so death receptor pathway is basically uh, is mainly concerned with transmembrane protein okay it is mainly concerned with the transmembrane protein which is called as fa S. okay this transmembrane protein is coded on cd95 receptor fas is a transmembrane protein which is basically it. so to ligate this to ligate this there is something called as fasl l for ligate or you can simply remember it as l for love means to create a bond okay l for ligate right so both these both these fas and fasl they combine together okay they combine together to activate the capsaicin okay to activate the the capsaicin so what capsaicin are regularly activated by extrinsic pathway are capsaicin 8 and particularly in humans it's going to be 10 okay 8 and 10 are mainly concerned with extrinsic pathway Whereas 9 is mainly concerned with the intrinsic pathway. Okay, clear? Intrinsic is 9, extrinsic is 8 and 10. So, so end product is activation of 9 here, activation of 8 and 10 here. So both these okay, factors which are going to further further activate further activate 3 and 6 until now okay factor 9 is from mitochondria sorry uh, capsis 9 is from mitochondria and capsis 8 and 10 are from the uh, cell that is extrinsic pathway so both are they are going to activate 3 and 6 so this 3 and 6 is going to activate the endonucleases and endonucleases causes the damage so this is a rough flow chart so apart from this particular flow chart there are other few things that you have to make a note okay always there 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 will be some people who will be supporting you if you're doing a, if you're doing something like if you're doing preparation few people will support you and few people will oppose you for the cell to go with this process of apoptosis you have something called as apoptotic genes and other one are anti for this anti apoptoid genes so they will ask you a question which of the following is anti apoptoid gene which of the following okay uh, you have to remember particularly anti are more important that is bcl2 
okay most of your questions will move around bcl group of oncogens basically what what is this bcl called as bc bcl is nothing but it is first detected on the b lymphocyte it is detected on the b cell lymphocyte okay that is b cell lymphocytes okay so it is called as bcl2 or bcl2 family group okay so apart from the bcl2 there is something called as mcl1 a uh, few people call it as mcl1 it is also uh, the most a uh, common uh, gene that is associated with the drug resistance to the chemotherapy this is the most common gene that is associated with the drug resistance uh, in the chemo uh, chemotherapy okay so apart from this the third gene that you have to make a note is bcl xl okay few people they call it as uh, bcl x okay few people they call it as bcl xl okay so these are the four genes that you have to make a note and most of your questions will move around this <coughs> four genes the next one is apoptoic genes okay so what are they okay so coming to this there is something called as bh group few people call it as bh3 group a few people call it as bh group so the bh group proteins uh, proteins are called as stress sensors okay they are called as stress sensors whenever the uh, whenever whenever the whenever there is stress or uh, diversion to the cell they get activated so they are called as stress sensors sensors and most of these are named as bim bid bad puma noxa okay all these are examples of this bh3 or bh group of apoptogenes so most of your questions will move around this area so apart from this uh, it is better if you make a note about other uh, genes that is uh, bcl sx and <laughs> bac and bak and p53 okay so these are the there is a bit of controversy regarding this in few areas but most of your questions can be handled by these two these examples are very very important okay so make a note about these examples they are going to ask all of the following belongs to apoptoic genes except all these are regularly asked questions i'm just going to have a quick recap so this is basically extrinsic and intrinsic intrinsic means inside the cell that is mitochondria permeability increases cytochrome c is released cytochrome c is going to react with apaf1 to form apoptosome which is going to activate capsaicin and this is one method other method is cytochrome uh, mitochondrial permeability increases samc and dabla are going to release they are going to inhibit the inhibiting protein by which they are going to activate capsaicin nine. so ultimate goal of intrinsic inside pathways activation of nine coming to extrinsic pathway which is present on the external surface that is called as death receptor pathway so basically fas is a transmembrane gene which is located on cd95 and this is going to react with the ligate to form a complex this complex is going to activate 8 and 10 10 specifically in humans okay so 8 and 10 are going to be the end product of the extrinsic pathway 9 is the end product of intrinsic pathway both are going to activate the next level that is 3 and 6 capsaices so 3 and 6 capsaices are going to activate endonucleases endonucleases are going to damage the cell this is what the process of apoptosis is uh, so next one uh, just want to add a add a add a word that is what is the meaning of capsaicin this is uh, one recently asked okay uh, capsaicin are a series of proteolytic or protein splitting enzymes they are series of protein splitting you have three you have six you have seven you have nine eight ten all these are there but mainly concerned with nine in the intrinsic eight and ten in the extrinsic and further going to activate three and six so they are a series of protein splitting enzymes and if you break the word capsis okay c stands for cystin so c stands for cystin proteinase c stands for cystin proteinase ASP stands for aspartic acid and the last one ASA stands for 
enzymes just make a note of this because c was given as a question in one of the examinations so apart from this just to please do make a note of what are antigenes what are normal genes uh, and the examples are important because they are regularly asking in this area i think this is uh, more than sufficient for a uh, from from a dental student point of view okay the rest all we'll try to solve uh, mcqs uh, uh, in 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 the yeah, in our uh, rapid fire in the evening session